PN governor there telling us there won't be any other extension after uh, the February 10th. We'll be watching out, you know, for, for all of that. But for our first conversation now, uh, with the signing of the 2023 budget of $21.83 trillion, along with the 2022 supplementary uh, appropriation uh, bill into law, the aggregate expenditures of $21.83 trillion is an increase of $1.32 trillion over the initial executive proposal uh, for a total expenditure of $20.51 trillion. Now, how effective will this budget be in determining the growth forecast of uh, the Nigerian economy? Let's talk to Mr. Roman Osaya Lenao, Business and Economic Intelligence um, Analyst and the Head Consultant at IntelServe Inc. Join us right here in the studio. Great to have you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So, uh, lo looking at um, this budget now, and uh, let's take it back, maybe five years. Let's throw it back to about five years. Looking at this budget, uh, are we seeing any improvement? Well, I think the first thing I'd, I'd like to say is um, the budget crossed its the $40 billion mark uh, for the first time in 2022. Now, uh, the, the trillions we basically hear deceives us. And it's only when you convert the budget to dollars that you start to see the realities of things, right? Um, I want to go back to 2014. Let, let's just start from 2014 and why 2014, because uh, oil boom ended in 2013, right? But you look at a population of about 200 and 11, 213 million people, and you only have a budget that hovered around 20, average of $29 billion between 2014 and 2021. Now, how effective will that budget be? Uh, I'll give you an analogy. Uh, let me use an analogy to, to explain it. You have a family uh, of five, father, mother, three kids, and they roll out a budget of about 20 uh, million naira for, for the year, right? And then you have another family of a man who marries three wives, maybe four, uh, that uh, four of them, a, a man, three wives, and then they have uh, 16 children. That means 20 in, in that household. And they roll out a budget of 2.5 million for the year. Now, how do you think the 2.5 million will be able to impact that? So, so they have more people in that family. Yeah, they have more people. So to be able to understand this, you, you need to also compare, right? When you do a trend or you, you do a comparative analysis, right, you start to see things clearer. Uh, what I did was to take the three largest economies in Africa, Nigeria, South Africa, and uh, Egypt. And when you look at it, right, um, for instance, uh, you have South Africa with less than 60 million people in uh, 2021. And 2022-2023 um, budget was about $136.6 billion, right? And then you're looking at Nigeria with a, a population of about 200 and we're, we're, supposed, we're projected to hit about 215 million people by the end of 2022. Uh, it's really out a budget of 47 point, I think 47, if you convert it to dollars, you're getting 47.15 uh, 47, 47 billion US dollars using the exchange rate in the budget. So how effective will that be? And then break it down further. Of that uh, 47.15 billion, only about 27% is projected revenue, which is about 22 point something billion, less than 23 billion. The rest, 24 point something billion, is going to be borrowed. Increasing liabilities, your assets are depleting. So, um, in a nutshell, I don't think um, that budget will impact the economy the way it should. So well, looking at it, you know, right now, you did mention in dollar term, yes. it's, uh, th there's not been that much of an increase, you know, with the budget. That's between, in dollar term. Between 20... Between, so we can say it's currency devaluation. It's not just currency devaluation. See, yes, it's currency devaluation, right? Between 2014 and 2023, the budget increased in Naira value by 336.4%. But in dollar value, it only increased by 60.7%, let's just say 61%, right? And then between 2014 and 2021, the budget in dollar value only increased by 8.7%. And your population is increasing. But meanwhile, what you also need to look at in the budget is the continuous liability, the increase in liability that is also increasing. Because as your liabilities increase, right, what happens is the little revenue you have 
you're going to be using majority of it to, to service your, your debt. Looking at the, the budget now, you know, holistically, we, we seem to always hit the, you know, expenditure target, but there's still that major issue with the revenue target. We, ha we hardly, you know, <coughs> okay. hit that. Let, what let, does that tell us? Okay. See, in 2021, I think, 2021, SE, South Africa generated um, about 85 billion U.S. dollars from IGR, right? 2022-2023 uh, budget, they said the, the budget deficit was going to be about, I think, 30.6 billion, right? Now, that means that their revenue target is about 106 billion for a population that is less than 60 million. So what does that tell you? See, until we are able to mop up IGR, right, increase our IGR, we'll continue to struggle. That's the truth. Uh, Nigeria has got to look for a way, uh, avenues in which um, IGR has to be increased. You understand? But at the end of the day, right, the question is, if I pay tax, right, is it going to the right use? If I pay tax, will, will it be used for roads? Will it be used for infrastructures? Will it be used for, for human capital development rather than funding the lifestyles of people? You understand? So when government also changes its lifestyle of living extravagantly, yes, people like me, people like you, to be, to be honest, we're all guilty. Nobody pays the right taxes in this country. And that's because we've lost um, confidence, right? In, in, the way money, uh, in the way our funds are managed in this country. But when you see that whatever you pay taxes for are being used for the right cause, obviously you will not, you won't break a sweat to, to, to pay whatever you need to pay. And we're already hearing the, you know, drum rolls of uh, raising taxes, you know, uh, at this point. And, you know, looking at it, you know, from your view, what other means, what, what other playbook, what else do they have in their playbook at this point to generate more revenue? Well, um, part of what I see, right, um, the cash crunch right now, everybody's having to start using, you know, um, apps to pay and all that stuff. So government... And the apps are down. Yeah, well, the apps are down because yeah, the infrastructures were not tough. really there, right? But one, of the, one good thing with this is that government will be able to track all the, all the revenues you make. I'll give you an example. Uh, there was an article I read some time ago about... Uh, uh, someone who sells in uh, traffic. And this guy says he makes about 20,000 20, naira daily, average. So that's about 600,000 a month, right? Now, when you look at that, VAT is supposed to be, if you calculate 7.5% of that, right, that's about uh, 45,000, which is lost in revenue to the government. So government needs to put infrastructure, uh, infrastructures in place to also help uh, limit um, lost revenues. You understand? But I like the idea. For the past two weeks now, I've not handled a thousand naira. I, I don't have a thousand naira. I get to the ATM and I see people. I it's just exactly you know, same I, thing I just for leave. Me. Once I, I see queues, I, I don't. I leave. I, I run. Now, but the, the thing is this, right? I like it. I like what is going on, right? Because government is able to track all transactions, and if they are able to track all transactions, they can tell you, laddie, you know what? Uh, you're underpaying tax. What your tax revenue is supposed to be to the government is X, Y, Z. You understand? Well, if you don't believe, well, you can negotiate. You understand? But that will also help tax revenue go up. Right. Yes. And, and talking about, you know, the street hawkers, I was having a conversation with my friend, you know, yesterday, and uh, he, he did say he imagines the street hawkers will be going through a lot, you know, right now, because uh, not everybody will be willing to part with um, the cash they have you know, in traffic. So that's another economy that's going to be impacted by what's going on right okay. now. Um, I think in the 80s, when we had a downturn in the economy, uh, the head of state then said he did not know what was still keeping the country uh, going. You understand? Now, I for one believe that the Nigerian economy is like twice the size of what it is. That's the truth. Now, there's a lot of the informal sector keeps the economy going. In the 80s, when uh, the head of state then made that statement that he, uh, the, the economy was supposed to have crashed, but he didn't know what was keeping it going, it's because we all concentrate so much effort on the formal sector. But the informal sector in this country is huge. Now, of the, of the 
two, three trillion naira that um, um, the CBN said was supposed to be in circulation, right? Only about 500 billion they said was in circulation. So you can imagine, I play football every Saturday morning. Somebody from the north said, you know what? The closest bank to my village, of which a lot of the people there are farmers, right? Is like from Ikeja to, to, to Ibadan. So you find a lot of these people putting funds, right, in the house. Okay, yes, it's going to impact the economy. But the thing is, government also needs to uh, put all these infrastructures in place. If they put the infrastructures in place, then it can also portray what the size of the Nigerian economy is. Now, all, all these things that we're not putting in place is a big disadvantage to us. I'll give you an instance. If the economy is projected in the true light of what it's supposed to be, maybe 800 or 900 billion or even a trillion dollars, do you know what that will do to our per capita income? Do you know what that will do to, to our poverty index? You understand? Do you know what that will do to uh, attracting investors into the country? You understand? It's going to put us in a very good positive light on the indexes worldwide, which investors basically look at. But the informal sector is too large to be overlooked by the government. Yes, it will affect the guy selling on the road, but I think I like what is going on. Things need to be done right, and we need to start doing it right. And at some point, we might uh, get to Kenya's level, where we see you know, most of the street hawkers there, they do have exactly. you know, other uh, exactly. payment uh, the, the, portals. The, the, the payment portal I come to you, okay, how much have you sold? I can track your uh, transactions through BVN. And I know that, well, you've made uh, 1.5 million this month. You understand? And I know that I'm supposed to be, uh, government is supposed to be entitled to 7.5% VAT. So all that will help government raise revenue. The, the 2023 budget, just 22, about 22 uh, billion is going to be raised through taxes and uh, sales of crude oil. It's, it's, it's a drop of water in the bucket of what it's supposed to be. And obviously, we've had that debate. You know, they say we have a, a revenue problem. Some say it's a spending, you know, issue. But let, let's look at spending now, government spending. What would you like to see, you know, going forward? You know, very soon now we'll have a new uh, CEO, you know, the helm of affairs. What kind of spending would you like to see in Nigeria's budget? See, from the 80s, right, our budget have always been budgets of liabilities. The budget, if you want to know if a country is going to get richer or it's going to get poorer, right, just look at the budget. Use the concept of the balance sheet where your net worth equals assets minus liabilities. What is the, 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 the projected um, investments in the budget? And what are the projected liabilities in the budget? I, uh, let, let's, let's go through some figures, right? South Africa, budget 136.6 billion. Taxes, uh, 106 billion. Budget deficit, 30.6 billion, right? So if you use that concept, asset minus liability, they already have an asset of 106 billion, right? And a liability of 30.6 billion. So it gives them 75, it gives them a return, um, a balance of uh, 75.4 billion, right? Now, in that 75.4 billion, what is South Africa investing in? Education, 27.92 billion. Health, 16.379 billion. And then development and infrastructure, another 29.3 billion, which brings the total to about 73 billion. But let us look at that of Nigeria, right? You have a budget of 47.15 billion. Projected revenue, 22.32 billion, right? Budget deficit is 24.82 billion. That's 52 or 53 percent of the budget. Now, when you look at it, of the assets in here, right, which is supposed to be the projected revenue, which is supposed to be the asset taxes and other sources, and then from oil. Oil that you drill every year is both an asset and liabilities. Why? I'll read something out to you, Ladi. It says, according to the World Bank, natural resources give rise to economic rents because they are not produced. Rent from non-renewable resources, fossil fuels and minerals, as well as rent from over-harvesting of forest, indicate the liquidation of a country's capital stock. When countries use such rents to support current consumption, 
rather than to invest in new capital to replace what is being used up, they are in effect borrowing against their future. So when you drill oil, right, and then you convert it to current asset, that is liquid cash, right, and then you spend, you're depleting part of your asset because your natural asset has also been estimated as part of your total asset as a country. You understand? So in effect, Nigeria, by the time we did the balance, right, the net worth for the budget, we're going to have um, a negative figure of 6.91, about, uh, about 7 billion US dollars. Now, what are we investing? We are investing just a peanut of that in education, health, and infrastructure. So basically, we are supposed to take from one asset, if you deplete your uh, natural asset, you're supposed to invest in other assets to create more wealth, which is what South Africa is doing and we are not doing. But in a few seconds now, what, what kind of budget will make Nigeria richer? Okay, see, South Africa, I think uh, the, the budget per capita, let, let's, let's go to budget per capita, right? Uh, the budget per capita... Because obviously... We okay, are budget per capita. Yeah. South Africa is investing $2,300 per citizen or per person in the country. Uh, Egypt is investing $1,016 per person. Nigeria is only investing a meager $221, which will not impact the life of the average Nigerian. To get a, a budget that can impact us, right, we should be looking at at least $1,000 per person, which will bring the budget, uh, uh, which will bring the budget to about $215 billion. US dollars. So that will mean more revenue? Yeah, that will mean more revenue. Government needs to look for how to generate this revenue. Put infrastructures in place in the rural areas. There's a lot of informal sectors, right, generating billions and trillions in the, in the, in the rural areas that they don't, do not even capture. Those people do not even pay taxes. So government needs to focus more on the uh, informal sector to see how they can develop those sectors and raise IGRs. Fantastic. All right. So we'll, we'll leave it there now. Obviously, a lot, you know, to be done. And, you know, when you look at the, uh, the, the new CEOs that are trying to come in, it looks like there's a whole lot, you know, for them to do with the Nigerian economy. But uh, we'll, <laughs> I'm sure we'll have to start somewhere and make it happen. Uh, thank thank you, you so much uh, for coming on the show today. Mr. So Roman Osegale, uh, CEO Intel Server Inc. It was great having your perspective thank today. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so uh, we'll take a break now. But with all that's going on with the Naira swap, uh, how is all of this impacting Nigeria and Nigeria's financial system and the banks? That's our next conversation. Do stay with us.